Hey guys, so I have been studying the book of First Kings lately and what the Holy Spirit has really been bringing out to me lately in that book is um, the origins really of the traditions of men. Um, that's something that, um, and doctrines of devils, that's really something that since day one we've had to <laughs> fight against. That's something that uh, we were talked about in the latter days. There would be, be many that follow after the, the doctrines of these seducing spirits and whatnot. So I guess it was very appropriate, well, I, obviously it was very appropriate for the Holy Spirit to lead me to... Um, first kings where this is greatly talked about because you see it even in the history at the beginning of the formation of israel so um first king starts off with solomon david's son um taking over his throne and building the temple of worship to to god and of course we know that solomon started off just like his father who was said to be a man of after God's own heart so he's doing everything right he's doing everything he's supposed to but then he starts taking on these pagan wives and um, in my soul ties video you'll see me talking about you know the, the reason why you're not supposed to be yoked with unbelievers because when your affections are turned towards someone who worships um, a demon or a devil which pagan gods that's what they are devils demons when your affections are tor turned towards this person you naturally begin to worship what they worship um sometimes you might not worship what they worship but you compromise because you want to make that person happy and this is very dangerous because we are not supposed to turn from god towards any other deities because they, they're, they're demons so God told, you know, told him that he would take the kingdom from Solomon's son and give it to Solomon's servant instead, which was Jeroboam. And everything that God said happened, of course. So now Jeroboam is the king. And not only was the kingdom taken from Solomon's son, Rehoboam, he, because um, after Solomon died, Rehoboam tried to exalt himself as king. And because that wasn't God's will, what happened was um, the people of Israel came to Rehoboam and they were talking about how Solomon had forced labor upon them and they weren't really hot, happy with Solomon, needless to say. And they basically were trying to get him to reverse some of the laws and regulations that Solomon had put in place for them. So Rehoboam told them to retreat for three days and come back to him after the third day while they were gone he consulted the elders and asked them what he should do they said that he should become a servant of the people and basically give them what they're asking for so that he can be king over them he rejected what they said and then he went to some young men that had grew up with him so that's basically like me going to the elders and asking them what's going on what i should do i don't like what they said so i went to my my home girls and i'm like okay well what should i do he knew that his homeboys were going to tell him what he wanted to hear so that's why he went to them so yes men they said that they should do to these people a whole lot worse um basically he said you know uh solomon yoked um disciplines you with the whip will discipline you with scourges which is scorpion it's translated into scorpions so basically he was saying that they were going to do to the people 10 times worse than what solomon did to the people just because they asked to be set free from the oppression that was enacted by his father solomon well because of it he wound up sending adoram his um i guess you could say tax collector would be a modern term but he sent him into israel to go do his job and the people of israel revolted and stoned this man to death <laughs> so at that point uh 10 of the tribes wound up revolting against rehoboam and they made jeroboam their um their king and the tribe 
of Judah remained faithful to Rehoboam. So David's bloodline was still going on in, Jero in uh, Rehoboam, in Judah. So um, Jeroboam was so afraid that the people of Judah would rise up against him because he was not of he was not a true descendant of David that he actually enacted two temples paganistic temples Bethel and Dan and he appointed men that were not Levite men which we know that God set it up to where only the tribe of Levi could operate as priests and ministers within his temple they were consecrated and ordained for that very purpose and reason but Jeroboam was letting anybody who wanted to be a minister be, become ordained, man-made ordination, and then minister in these temples, these paganistic temples. Okay, so here are the two things that the Lord had brought out to me. You have all these Bible colleges and you have all these um, institutions and conferences that are teaching you how to be an apostle or a pastor and all this other stuff. Let me tell you something. God created these positions. You cannot operate in a position that God did not give you. A hand could not be a foot. The illustration that the Holy Spirit gave me was, imagine trying to drive your car with your hands on the gas and the accelerator, your feet steering but then your head's still trying to see out of the, the window, the windshield. It's impossible. You will, you will look crazy and you will not operate correctly. And I can guarantee you that car ain't going nowhere. If you do manage to get the car to go somewhere, it's definitely not going to go far. <laughs> and it might crash before it gets down the road. If it goes, if it moves at all. That is not God. God is a God of decency and order. So... You cannot be made anything that God has. I don't care if you have a piece of paper that says that you are allowed to do this, that, and the other in whatever state. If God did not allow it, if God did not ordain it, you are operating outside of God's will. That's number one. The second thing was if you look throughout the Old Testament and the example, all throughout the Old Testament, you'll see that the temples of worship the altars of worship that were built unto God were built in significant places according to the patriarch that built it like Jacob for instance when he wrestled that angel next to the brook he built an altar there that was a life changing that's when he became Israel that was when he became Israel he built an altar in that location the, what the Holy Spirit was speaking to me was they are, there are churches everywhere, on every corner, in shopping malls, in schools, all over the place. And here's the thing. Our hearts are in the right place when it comes to these things. However, there are specific places that God wants these temples of worship. There are specific people that God wants to operate solely in these temples of worship. And not everybody is meant to stay in just that temple. He'll send you from temple to temple to work and operate. So when you have people that say, oh, you're a church hopper and you're unstable, stay in your lane. You do not know that person's function. Now, if their fruit is showing that they are unstable, meaning that they're cussing people out and one minute they love God, the next minute they listen to some booty shaking music, okay, yeah. Then you call a spade a spade. But if they are, if their fruits are lining up with the fruits of the Holy Spirit, but you see them in a different church every Sunday, please understand, God is using them. They are on assignment. We have to get out of these man-made traditions. I was in a church very recently and it was so much going on in this church that I that was just so unbiblical it so there was it was no scripture supporting anything that was going on my heart started breaking my soul my spirit was grieving because these people were very nice people 
But I'm looking around and I'm like, why have we sang 15 songs? Why are there church announcements by the same church announcements by everybody that has gotten up here? They've said the same thing. It's like four people said the same thing. Why, why is it? Oh my God. I can't even, <laughs> I can't even think right now of all the stuff that I saw and heard that I'm like, this is some good people. They have just been indoctrinated. And I was talking to my father earlier today, and a few years back, I received the revelation from the Holy Spirit. You'll notice that a lot throughout the Bible, throughout the, the Gospels, when Yeshua would heal somebody, he would tell them not to speak of it. And I used to just always think, okay, well, that's because he was modeling humility, and he wanted us to learn that we're not doing it. it's not us doing it it's God doing it through us so we're, we're supposed to walk in humility but then the Holy Spirit one day came and told me that's not just the only reason so I'm like okay what's this other reason he wanted people to come to know who he was on their own he wanted them to find out who he is on their own so take this for instance I just mentioned my father so now you know about my father you know two things about my father I talk to him about God and that he's alive or at least you should hope that he's alive and I'm not crazy I promise you I'm not crazy but you know at least that he's alive and he talks to me about God so you know about my father but do you know his name you know his favorite color do you know where he lives you know what kind of car he drives do you know what he does for a living do you know how many brothers and sisters he has? You don't. You don't. Unless you personally know me and you have personally met my father, you do not know anything about him other than the two things that I already mentioned. That's the same thing with Jesus Christ, Yeshua. There's a lot of people that know of him. And because of their knowledge of him, they've given their heart to him, but it stopped there. Once their heart, I'm sorry, I got these bugs flying around <laughs> once their heart was given to Yeshua it stayed that was the end of it they didn't seek out him who he is and it's very simple a lot of times we got these folks that are telling you you got to go through this long sacrilegious type of experience all you got to do is ask let me let me let me try to try to bring it in for you ask and you shall receive whatever you ask God you will receive an answer yes is an answer no is an answer wait is an answer ask and you'll receive an answer seek if you seek God I can guarantee you you're gonna find him I can guarantee it because he wants you to knock and the door shall be opened unto you if you knock on the doors of God's kingdom, he is going to let you in. If you are seeking him with your whole heart, he's going to let you in. Now, I'm not talking about heaven, yo. Because you know the only way you get into heaven is through Yeshua, through Jesus Christ. But if you knock on the doors to his kingdom, he's going to let you in. How many of us have been taught that that scripture means ask whatever you want of the Lord and he'll give it to you? He wasn't talking about things. At least not material things. He was talking about spiritual things. Anything spiritual that you ask of God. If you ask God who he truly is. To show you who he truly is. And who you are in relation to him. I can guarantee you he's going to answer that question. Because he answered it for me. The Holy Spirit started leading me to ask for certain things like Lord. Show me if we're really worshiping you in these churches. And if we're not, show me who we're really worshiping. He started breaking this stuff down for me. And this stuff is this stuff is mind blowing. You will be surprised at how many traditions of men, how many things that we do in church that is unbiblical. But that's what we do. We've seen it done, we were taught to do it, so we keep doing it, and nobody ever asks any questions. My people perish for lack of knowledge. In the last days, many will begin to follow, 
the doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. So, the mini is implying that they're already doing it, but now it's going, the level of people doing it is going to be increased. They're already doing it. They've been doing it. Since before Yeshua and even after Yeshua. They've been doing it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Jeroboam, it seemed like everybody that came after him, Nadab and Baasha, all of them, <laughs> they got worse and worse and worse. They were continuing to worship these idols. They were continuing. Matter of fact, Jeroboam even changed one of the dates of the festivals that God had set forth for the Israelites. He changed one of the dates. So now you got to sit there and wonder, hmm, I'm celebrating this day on this day, but is that really the day I'm supposed to be celebrating it on? And you see this throughout history. The Hebrew calendar has 10 months. July and August are part of Greco-Roman calendar. July was from Julius Caesar and August was from Augustus Caesar. They both decided that they wanted to have their own months named after them. Have you ever wondered why? And they both wanted their months to have 31 days, which is why February has 28. Did you ever wonder why? <laughs> the, the two calendars don't, don't line up because they're changing around. So if they added two more months into their calendar, well, into the, the Hebrew calendar to make it into the Greco-Roman calendar, that would have to shift some days around. That shifts a lot, especially if... 31 and 31 is 62. That's 62 days that every day that lines up on the Hebrew calendar is shifted 62 days further out. 62 days. Do you know how many months that is? Of course you do, because I just told you. It's two months. Two months out. Two months out. Traditions of men. We have to start asking God to give us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding about him, his kingdom, his son, the Holy Spirit, us, the church as a whole, and the kingdom of darkness and its agenda. These things we have to start asking because the time is drawing near. We ain't going to be here much longer. I know you think I'm crazy, but look, the time is drawing near. You can't be drinking milk no more. You need to be on some solid foods. Because that drinking milk thing is going to get you caught up. Not in the right way. You're not going to get caught up. You're going to get caught up. <laughs> you need to start asking these questions. Don't do it because that's what your grandmama did. That's what your mama did. That's what you were taught to do. And that's what you're teaching your kids. No. Seek God. Have a relationship with him. Ask him who he truly is. Ask him to show you if you're really worshiping him. Do you really want to know? I know everybody wants to go to heaven, but do you really want to know if you're worshiping him or not? Because if you ask him, he's going to tell you. He's going to tell you. But here's the beauty of it. When you ask him and he tells you, you then have the choice to say, all right, Lord, I repent of this. Please remove it from my heart. Please fill me with your Holy Spirit and then show me how to worship you in the proper way. It's not, it's not rocket science, y'all. It's not. All we have to do is submit ourselves completely to God and come to him as little children. Little children ask all kinds of questions. Why? Why? What is this? Why? How? What? Yes, little kids ask questions. They ask questions. Why? To gain knowledge. <laughs> I hope that this helped you because I promise you my mind is blown. God has been showing me some things lately, and I promise you, I've been under spiritual attack so heavy lately that I can't even describe it to you. I'm smiling because I know that that means that the time is drawing near. I'm praying that I'm, I'm, I'm even praying that I'm doing what I need to and that I'm seeking the Lord properly and whatnot because I don't hold myself above anybody. I don't want to be making these videos, but then when he come, I get left back here. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. So I hope you're watching. I hope you got it. I hope in your heart, I pray right now in your heart, that your heart is softened to these words that are not my own, but from the Lord. 
and that you begin to truly seek him and ask him these things, your soul is at stake. And once he shows it to you, you can then go and show it to other people. People you know and you come in contact with, their soul is at stake. God bless.